I already know. It sounds extremely counterintuitive, and there is no doubt that sleep deprivation actually is a fairly dangerous thing on a normal everyday basis. And plus, on top of that, you could probably find some articles in regard to how dangerous sleep deprivation is, or it could create anxiety, so on and so forth. But keep in mind, that is feeding into something which I am also guilty of, confirmation bias. Now, this is sleep deprivation in a lab setting, and it's only done for about 24 to 36 hours. And within that 24 to 36 hours, they were able to yield tremendous benefit. Let's go right into the research title itself. And again, try to push biases aside. If this has potential to actually help people and help people rapidly, it deserves an honest, clear-minded look into the research title itself. Sleep deprivation is an effective antidepressant for nearly half of depressed patients. The results before I proceed, uh, they found that it produced results in about 40 to 60% of depressed patients within 24 hours. And I'm a big, big uh, proponent of anything that can yield an individual benefit fast, rapidly, without the need of either a supplement or a medication per se. Now, before I proceed again, and to help eliminate a little bit of the bias, which I am so much hanging on to, because knowing how dangerous sleep uh, disturbances or deprivation can be, look who funded the research itself. Big, big heavy hitters. If you notice, NASA's in there quite a bit too, as well. But right into the synopsis of the study, reading off their quotes from their basically their public release or press release, sleep deprivation typically administered in controlled inpatient settings rapidly reduces symptoms of depression in roughly half of depression patients according to the first meta-analysis on the subject in nearly 30 years. Although total sleep deprivation or partial de sleep deprivation can produce clinical improvement in depression symptoms within 24 hours and depression, again, it's such a hard thing to listen to, including myself, knowing how dangerous sleep deprivation can be on a regular non-clinical scale in the general population, so to say, where you can't sleep for a few days or a week or whatever it is. This is in a clinical setting. Keep on remembering that. So, to proceed, all right, the, the antidepressant is the most common treatment for depression. Such drugs typically take weeks or long to experience results. Again, results within 24 hours according to the research looking into meta-analysis. Methods, partial sleep deprivation, sleep for three to four hours, that's what it was, followed by forced wakefulness for 20 to 21 hours. And they compared it again to other studies where they deprived an individual of sleep to 36 hours. They found that the partial sleep deprivation where an individual slept for three or four hours or whatever, and then was forced to stay awake the remaining time worked just as well as the previous studies which showed sleep deprivation again for 36 hours onwards. Again, please do not dis uh, confuse sleep disturbances with sleep deprivation. All right, with that in mind, let's go right into study parameters to see exactly how they came to this um, theory. Well, I don't want to say conclusion as of yet because still more studies need to be done. Study parameters as follows. DOI citation, we want to read right from the abstract because reality, the abstract put the parameters in a perfect setting. Objectives, as you could see there. Data sources, you can look at that right real fast, no sense reading through that. Study selection, they found 66 independent studies that met their criteria for inclusion. Data extraction for the biostatistics uh, statisticians out there, there's your information. Results, the overall response rate to sleep deprivation was 45% among studies that utilized randomized control groups and 50% of those that did not. You know, placebo group, uh, an individual uh, has sleep deprivation, randomized control along those lines. All right, the response to sleep deprivation was not affected significantly by the sleep deprivation performed, the nature of the clinical sample, medication status, the definition of response used, or age and gender of that sample. So they got um, redundant results continuously, at least upon the study inclusions or the studies that they included in the particular meta-analysis itself. Conclusions. These findings support a significant effect of sleep deprivation and suggest a need for future studies on the phenotypic nature of the antidepressant response to sleep deprivation on their neurobiological mechanisms of action and on the moderators of the sleep deprivation treatment response in depression itself. They would love to find out why this works so well 
in the clinical setting that they utilize or the clinical setting that was utilized in the analysis of studies that they chose to use in their particular meta-analysis. So it does uh, bring up more questions, so uh, more than actually that are answered, so to say, but they're showing it has solid efficacy despite the counterintuitiveness of what we are normally uh, uh, led to believe in the general population. Again, this is short duration in a clinical setting. It's not just general sleep disturbances uh, per se. And I want to keep on reiterating that. Sleep deprivation is really dangerous. So if someone's going to try something like this, please, 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 please do it in a parallel with medical supervision. So to proceed to the conclusion of this very counterintuitive study, as follows, these studies in our analysis show that sleep deprivation is effective for many populations regardless of how the response was quantified, how the sleep deprivation was delivered, or the type of depression the subject was experienced. We found the nearly equivalent response rate. The authors note that further research is needed to identify precisely how sleep deprivation causes rapid, rapid, within 24 hours, it's fascinating, and significant reductions in depression severity. Also, future studies are needed to include a more comprehensive assessment of potential predictors of treatment. See who's going to benefit the most, so to say. Because remember, 40 to 60 percent of the people benefited quite uh, well from the sleep deprivation therapy, but that also means that a large group did not as well. Uh, predictors outcomes to identify those patients most likely to benefit from sleep deprivation. Again, to reiterate, this was a short time of sleep deprivation or where the individual slept, for example, in this case, uh, three or four hours, then followed by forced wakefulness within a short duration of time. This is not an individual that's continuously experiencing sleep deprivation or sleep disturbances per se. Beautiful, uh, albeit intriguing study. Again, it's a meta-analysis. I know a lot of biostatisticians are gonna look into this and they're gonna try to tear it apart one way or the other. Very tough to look at without uh, incorporating, uh, even myself, my own confirmation bias, which is a term you should be familiar with if you work with biostatistics. However, if you could benefit people without the need for a medication or dependency on other types of treatments, I am all for it, as bizarre as the study sounds in regard to its title, Sleep Deprivation, Help Improving Depression. Who would have thought? Again, Raptor Channel signing off. Hope you find this information of use. Very, very intriguing, uh, and or I should say even provocative. But thank you very, very much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you all again in seven days. Catch you then. Bye.